But kicking the show off today, that's right, we have the dope dad himself. That's right, Rico Lamite. When he's not constantly backpedaling on all things that come out of his mouth, you can catch him trying to move forwards for social equity applicants every day. That's right. It is the dope dad himself, Rico Lamite. Bullshit, Jason. 100% bullshit. Uh, I, I call fake news on that. I almost lost my whole desk right here. It would have been great for all of you <laughs> and horrible for me. <laughs> so, either way, I've got some very, very, very interesting news coming out of Massachusetts today uh, from our show favorite, Cure Leaf. And I'm very, very sad that Gretchen Gailey is not on to comment on this one. But, um, being, being a PR agent for Cure Leaf these days has got to be one of the highest paying jobs in the cannabis industry. And according to G uh, GBH News' Tory Bedford, thousands of Massachusetts Cure Leaf employees received an official email last week from State Cannabis Control Commission causing widespread panic and confusion throughout the community out there. The email was vague, providing little context beyond the announcement that a major data breach occurred in each of their names, home and email addresses, phone numbers, and dates of birth had been accidentally leaked to the public. All this is in the middle of an investigation into the MSO's ties to Roman Abramovich, the sanctioned Russian oligarch who, uh, with alleged ties to Vladimir Putin. Uh, the commission says that the leak was an honest mistake made by an employee who fat fingered the email uh, response to a public re uh, records request from Grant Smith Ellis, an industry blogger seeking information on the uh, Abramovitz case. And um, in addition to the requested info, one of the files erroneously sent was a spreadsheet with over 17,000 rows of current Cure, uh, Cure Leaf employee personal data. Uh, the second was data on former Cure Relief workers and the reasons that they were no longer associated with the company, um, including specific details of alleged uh, violations of company policy. Um, so I assume that was taken from exit interview files that were accidentally sent out to Smith Ellis. Um, he said that he never released the re unrequested data and the story he actually published stuck to its claimed original content to publicize salacious interagency communication between state commissioners regarding his investigation. But two days later, Smith Ellis and uh, the story's co-author, Eric Casey, say that they were contacted in, uh, by panicked agency officials requesting that they redact certain parts of the story due to safety concerns and leaving the information up would, be, would put certain people at the agency at risk and certain people at Cure Relief at risk. Uh, naturally, the journalists asked for further details as to how serious the potential blowback on the story uh, or the leak could be, uh, but that request was denied. Smith, Ellis, and Casey said that safety is something that they really do care about, so they actually deleted the post in its entirety. And then he said in a statement to GBH, uh, GBH News, it would be very nice to get some answers. I think that if there's a threat here to an agency of the state, government bigger than just those staff members in that agency. This is about the United States of America and the integrity of its republic. If it was, if it was attacked, I want to know. He then claimed that after being asked by professors to avoid campus out of an abundance of caution, he went on a temporary hiatus from New England law where he had been attending classes and is currently holed up in a undisclosed location at a safe house until things boil over. In a statement made now, responding to the story's release, a commission spokesperson said that Smith Ellis uh, agreed to delete the problematic off uh, the problematic information off his computer, uh, and the commission has begun a review of SOPs and training for public records to avoid a repeat offense. After confirming the accuracy of Grant Smith Ellis's story as told, they offered a few soothing words to all parties. Given the ongoing and confidential nature of the investigation, the materials should not have been produced or distributed. Out of an abundance of caution, the agency also asked the requester to eliminate any references to implicated staff communications in reporting about the records request and on social media. This is now a series of fires on several different fronts, but at this point, the best thing for us to do is be honest. This was a mistake. This should have never happened. This would. This was avoidable. This was preventable. 
and we're going to suffer the consequences as a result, end quote. The statement made no mention of whether Joe Biden was still employed at the agency or not. I'm sure the thousands of exposed Cureleaf employees feel a whole lot safer now uh, after being doxxed by an agency tasked to keep you, your colleagues, and consumers of the products that you sell safe. Uh, the same agency appointed to keep tabs on your entire organization uh, that believes that there's no such thing as overtaxation or overregulation uh, in the middle of investigating the guy who funded your company who just so happens to be sanctioned, uh, a sanctioned Russian oligarch with alleged ties to an international war criminal. It's okay. Everything is fine. Uh, I guess the silver lining here is Cureleaf, uh, Massachusetts is now unionized as of last at the end of last year. So I'm sure, uh, we'll <laughs> we'll soon see or hear a statement from the UFCW Local 328. I'm super sad uh, that our in-house Kremlin expert Gretchen Gailey is not here to comment on this one, but I'm still very interested to see to hear everybody else's take. I'm Regal Lamit. That was that on the street. Hi, Hi at Nine News. What do you think about this one, Jason?